and welcome back. Now today I was in the middle of soldering this new PCB prototype board that I got from PCB Way, and I hit snag almost immediately. Yes, not with the actual board itself. No, no, we'll talk about the board another time because it's not yet complete uh, and ready for consumption as it were. But I was soldering some of the SMD components on there and I always put flux on first. Um, basically this stuff, this is MG Chemicals, it says no no rinse or whatever it says, no clean paste flux. Always clean the flux off your boards. For one thing, even if the flux doesn't have an effect on the board itself or the components, it acts like a dust and grime magnet, doesn't it? And drags things onto it. However, that wasn't the problem. The problem was, I want to have a big shout out for PCB Way, PCB prototype, the easy way. Now, we all know about their PCBs, excellent that they are, but they also do, as you can see here, 3D printing look. Let's have a look what they do. Now, as you see here, this looks quite similar to the PCB upload screen. You just upload your file, probably an SDL or something like that. Tell them what you want it to be made of, and it gives you such a wide choice here that you probably can't do on your own 3D printer. So um, I'm very tempted to try something like nylon or something, yeah. Um, and you just upload it, tell them what you want, the colour and so forth, and that's it. You submit it, get a request for a quote, and Bob's your uncle. And yeah, that's going to be my next step, I think. And don't forget, they also do Flex and reg Rigid Flex PCBs. Now these are really something quite special. If you need that sort of thing, you really need to look into it. It's great. For us hobbyists, standard boards over here, $5 for 10 pieces. How can you go wrong with that? I suggest we check them out right now. However, that wasn't the problem. The problem was um, I'd run out. So there's me trying to push the plunger, thinking, hang on, I haven't got any flux left. What do I do? And uh, yes, I do have a, another bottle of this stuff here, but this is this is liquid. I don't know if you can see it sloshing about in the bottom there. And yeah, I guess it's better than nothing if you've got a bare board, but it's not what I wanted for SMD type soldering. So I thought, what am I going to do? Now, I do have a tub of solder, same stuff. Beginning it from here into here was going to be a bit of a challenge, not least because this particular syringe, actually as delivered by MG Chemicals, when you take out the plunger, the other bit doesn't come out. Deliberately so, I guess, so you don't start filling it back up. Well, I thought, hmm, I will not be beaten. So, what did I do? Well, I got out of my box of tricks, and I've got lots and lots of syringes in here that I bought a long time ago, thinking I'd be using more of them, actually, I must admit. And I thought, right, I want to get the flux from here into one of these syringes, except this syringe, I mean, look at it, it's 20 mil. This one here that's run out is 10 mil, and even that's a bit clunky, to be quite honest. And you're trying to squeeze out a small amount of flux at the end, it's a little bit big. So I went on to Amazon and I bought these one-time syringes. Yeah, okay, this has got a bit of flux in. We'll come on to that in a minute, okay? So yeah, there's a bag here. You can see this bag of, of um, syringes with various caps and uh, these nozzles, which do come in a range of sizes, by the way. And I thought, that's the size I need. Perfect. And I can put a nice narrow tip on there just to be really precise with the amount of flux that I'm dispensing. But the problem remained, how do I get it from here to here? And there's an easy way, apparently. I scoured the internet looking for ways, and I did try initially just sort of taking this one out, because these are designed to be taken apart, and trying to scoop it in here and then squidging this back on and the mess you would not believe and flux is is terrible stuff it really is terrible stuff so i thought there's got to be a better way surely so anyway i found this guy on youtube so this is the website i found or the youtube video anyway by signal ditch i'm afraid he didn't mention his name but it's probably worth looking at because he does mention the lure connectors between tubes and uh, yeah, it's where I got the idea from, really. There are other videos, obviously, on YouTube that cover this topic, but this was the first one I found. Now, that video was very helpful, but it did still try and teach me how to put 
flux from one syringe into a different smaller syringe which isn't quite what I wanted I wanted to do it from a, a tub remember but the principle is the same now the key component here is this little thing that's on the end of this syringe and it's a lure adapter or what you say l-u-e-r okay there are, there's a picture a lure adapter and what happens is that it's well, it's very tight now but this this little thing here screws into that syringe it can probably go tighter than what i've done it and then this syringe let me get a, a blank one screws into the end of that there we are so you've got to buy syringes that have got this lure scred, a thread or screw mount or whatever it is and now you've got the two joined up and as you can see from this one here just by pushing on this end here it will start filling up this syringe here if there was any flux in here to push out of course remember this one is empty so what to do well this is where the large syringe now comes into its own this is 20 mil and uh, i mean you wouldn't think 20 mil would take up that space would you there oh, that's 20 mil it's set to it now but the great thing about this is apart from the fact this bottom piece comes off and leaves that bit open it means you've got a nice wide mouth here to scoop the flux from here into and you don't have to be you know that careful about it quite frankly this is well the consistency of jam i guess or a, as as my american friends might call it jelly except it's not it's not jelly like in any way it is much more like solidified cooking fat yeah well, i know well it is flux isn't it and you can just literally use a small spoon or a, a spudger tool in fact um, to scoop it in here now i've got lots of spudger tools what's that what's, what's a spudger tool spudger tools are the name given to implements like this one here to help you open up cases like phone cases or i don't know any any sort of case you know so i wanted to open up this you've taken all the screws out but it's clipped together and you have to get in between the two halves of the case that's what spudger tools are for and there's there are dozens and dozens of types really ultra thin flexible ones and they use more solid ones that give you a bit of leverage anyway i would suggest that using this end as a sort of a, a spoon to scoop all this up and then put it into here will be enough then that you could transfer it into one of these little ones yes we're going to do a real live demo in a minute i'm just so looking forward to that what could possibly go wrong anyway so that's the idea remember you don't need to fill this good lord this thing here only takes two mil two mil of flux so if you look at this these markings on here two mils only down to there so if i scoop a couple of spoonfuls two or three of these into that and then put the the end back on and squidge it all up the end yeah put my little lure adapter on here screw it into this one bob's your uncle yeah what do you reckon let's try it out right we're going to start off then with this big fat syringe of 20 mils and uh, get some of this flux that i've got in this this pot which as i said was uh, 8341 mg chemicals flux yeah very good i mean that's there are dozens of fluxes out there. I'm sure most of them will work just fine. So we're going to scoop some of this um, out of here. Oh, yummy. Look, you could almost eat that on toast, couldn't you? Anyway, scoop some of that out of there into here. Um, as I say, we only want two mil to fit in here. And there's already some in here. I was playing about earlier. So uh, let's assume that um, I've put whatever I need in here. That was one scoop, right? So I'm now going to put that on here and push it up towards the end. Right, that will do. So it's right at the end now. Now put on one of my magic connectors, and which has already been screwed into one end of this 2mm syringe. So we'll screw that into the other side now. I don't know how firmly they have to screw in, but I guess you don't want any leakage. So there we are, that's done. That's down at the end. And, um, well, I guess i just got to sort of push it in now. Let's see, oh, look. Oh, look, there you are. Look. You can see it going in to the other side. Well, it's certainly going in. It needs a bit of force. I've got to, I won't, I won't um, say it doesn't, but, oh, yeah, look at that. Good Lord. 
Well, it's good job I didn't put any more flux in there because I don't think it would have taken any more, frankly. That's it. This is now hard down. I can't squeeze that anymore. And this is now whoop, chock a block. Look at that. Pretty good. Pretty good. So now I can choose what size needle, blunt needle, I need. Now, this one is far too big. This is this is huge. Um, that'll be all right for shipbuilding, I suspect. We want a really, really fine one like this. You see this one here? Um, probably not because it's not focusing. That's really fine and will deliver a very, very fine blob, if you like. So let's do that on a bit of card. Here we are on the MG Chemicals card. So this is... I don't know what size this is. I'll put it down in the video description. So if I squeeze that, there, look, it's coming out. Look at that. That is, I'm impressed. That'd be just right for an SMD type component. That one, do you see that little amount coming out there? I'm trying to get the light to reflect on it. See, that is superb. Now, as I said, I've got lots of um, different types of syringes in this box. Okay. Well, the needles, if I just show you them, all different colours and sizes. So I guess it might be worthwhile just thinking about getting a selection, but don't get two big ones because you just ain't going to need it. All right. OK, that's that then. So just to recap, this is what I bought from Amazon, having found it, uh, having watched that video. So there's 20 pieces in there. I don't think we'll need 20 ever, but it's always good to have a few spare, isn't it? Because these are bound to get lost or broken or you can't find them and this this bag that is constantly over spilling um it says tw uh, 20 pieces of two millimeter two millimeter syringes all right and two millimeters is about a nice size really for doing smd type work and they come with caps and their own set of needles like see this i think these might be a little bit big these green ones but they probably work all right and the caps stop stop it then oozing out the end although to be quite honest i've not noticed it ooze out of this little fine needle because it's so small but if, when i throw this needle well this whole syringe of flux into my box over here i don't want it sort of dripping out the end like some ballpoint pens do you know so it's probably just as well i've got some of these these black things to go on it let's um let's just see Oh, I see. That has to come out then. The needle comes out and the black bit goes on instead. I probably won't bother, to be honest. I'll just, I'll just leave it like that. Cool. I think that was okay as a sort of a demo and using my camera from the side. And I hope I didn't block too much with my hands. So there we have it then. The perfect way, well, perfect-ish way, of transferring flux from a jar like this, which costs, I might add, about the same as one of these but you get 50 grams in here and 10 grams in there tell me which one is the better value this particular flux by the way by mg chemicals it's uh, 8341 no clean flux paste is excellent i mean that's why i keep using it because it really does work but i do always take the flux off the board using one of my horsehair cut down horsehair brushes and lots of ipa no no not the beer not the beer isopropyl alcohol which today is relatively cheap again post covid because uh, nobody's buying it right okay well except us obvious obviously so there we are an unintended video this week because i was hoping to show you this board but i haven't got as far with it as i was hoping yeah what what what's that you want you want to taste it well all right this is a, a a PCB that can will contain eventually one of these little units, which is an ESP32 Dev Kit C Mark IV or V4. There we are. You can just about make that out, yeah. So that plugs into here, and then this has got umpteen potential connectors on it. Um, not all of which will be used at any one time. That's not the point at all. And then we can just wire up any one of those connectors. And I say connectors, I'm using KF2510s, but you could use anything, wires effectively, for prototyping. And I've even got the JTAG, the small JTAG, wired up as well on there. Well, you know, there's space for it up there in that top right-hand corner. Doesn't mean we have to put it on each one, of course. Reset button, power cable, um, 
and I reckon this is now going to provide me with a mechanism for using my umpteen boards, well these ones, yeah, which I bought in a big batch a while back, to do things around my workshop, which we'll discuss in the forthcoming videos. Great, that's enough for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it's given you some ideas. Uh, links to all the stuff where you can find, you know, flux and syringes and these blunt needles. Uh, that big bag of stuff that I got. I'll put all those links. I've got most of it, I must admit, on Amazon because I wanted to, you know, wrap it up pretty quickly. You can probably buy it in AliExpress, Banggood and places like that as well. But you're going to be waiting a little while, aren't you? Okay, that's it. Yeah. I think we're done and dusted. Don't forget, if you like these sort of videos, uh, this is a little bit different to my normal video. I'm, I'm, there's no code involved. Oh my goodness me. Never mind, we'll get over that hurdle. Um, if you like these videos, have a look at what else I've done. In the video description below, there's always um, a PDF link that contains all my videos. You can search it and all sorts of things. Yeah. So yeah, do have a look at that. And remember, give it a thumbs up if you like it, because YouTube then say, ah, oh, that was a good video. I'll offer it to more people. If you want to say something, and I hope you do, put a comment down below yeah, to say the way you do it, because there's bound to be more than one way of getting flux out of a tube or into a tube or whatever. And uh, don't forget, if you like these videos, do subscribe. And yeah, you at the back, what is it? Correct. Tick that bell. If you don't tick the bell, you don't get notified. Daft, but you've got to do it. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.